Hi, welcome to the Tucker Island Facebook Live today. I'm your host, Kevin Mason, and then joining me today is uh, Jim Gao out of our St. Louis region. Thanks for having me, Kevin. Absolutely, Jim. Um, thank you for coming on. So um, today what we're going to be talking about is um, should you give your home to your kids? And just kind of before we jump into all that, I want to remind everyone that you can always send in any um, questions you have into our chat box, or if you have some um, specific questions that you would need to actually meet with an attorney with, you're more than welcome to do that. You can email us or you can call us at 866-335-3375. And the last thing before we begin today, I just want to make, uh, make it known that we're not forming a client um, relationship here. Uh, all that we're doing is just providing some informational material. And uh, if you do need any legal advice, then you need to contact a lawyer. So Jim, with all of that, I'm kind of going to hop into it here. Um, what would be kind of the rationale behind someone thinking about or wanting to uh, transfer their home to their child? Sure. So we get we get clients come into the office all the time uh, worried about protecting the house, uh, typically from nursing home and Medicaid costs. Um, and so they, you know, first question, the first thing that pops into their head is, well, why don't I just give it to the kids now? They're going to they're going to get it eventually anyway. Um, why don't we get it out of our names and protect it and just transfer it over to the kids now uh, rather than wait? Um, so like a Medicaid asset protection kind of strategy yeah. is what yep. they're thinking. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. They just don't want to lose it to the nursing home. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. So what would be, I guess, some of the, uh, I don't know, potential pitfalls maybe of going this route? Well, the first thing is you, you gave it away. You gifted the house away. You lose control. Uh, the kids can sell it out from under you if they want. They can evict you if you, uh, you guys get in a fight. Um, and you know, it's just, like I said, your name's not on it anymore. Um, and then your name not being on it anymore. For example, in, in Illinois, mm -hmm. um, us being right here on the border, there's a, a senior homestead exemption for property tax, uh, you know, incentives. Mm -hmm. So you lose, you lose those kind of benefits. If, if there's a homestead exemption on it, you'll end up paying more property taxes every year. Um, your, your kids own the home, you don't. So if they get divorced, if they get sued, um, you know, it's attachable to their, by their creditors. Um, and then, you know, as far as what what are the logistics of gifting it, you know, in the year you make that gift, if the house is worth more than $15,000, which is the annual gift tax exemption, you've got to file a gift tax return. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're not going to end up paying, unless the house is worth more than $11.7 million, you're not going to pay a gift tax, but you've still got to do the paperwork and, and go through the motions to, to claim that uh, credit against your lifetime exemption. Right. Um, Yep. And then as far as taxes are concerned, uh, when if you gift it to your kids, they don't get what's called a step up in basis. So if the kids inherit the house, they get a, the, the, their basis in it, their value that they got it, got it at is the value of date of death. Mm -hmm. If you gift it to them, their value when they go to sell it, their, their basis that the capital gains tax is based on is the date, the, the value of the date when you purchased it. So if this house has been in the family for 20 years, the value today is much higher <laughs> than when they purchased it. So um, those kids go to sell that this gifted house and they've got to pay capital gains from, you know, 2021 20, values all the way back to, you know, 1940s values, <laughs> right. potentially. So, um, you know, that's that's a big pitfall there is, is the capital gains step up. Right. And then there's also like, right, isn't there... I guess, kind of potentially along the same lines as like a divorce, what happens if you gifted the home and um, to, you know, your child and their spouse, and then let's say, you know, God forbid, like your child passes away. Now, the owner of the home is, you know, your, your uh, son-in-law or daughter-in-law or something, and really just kind of who knows where life might take them at that point. Right. Wow. Yeah. It, it's, it's their house and their will determine where it determines where it goes if they predecease you. So yeah, exactly. you're, you're looking down the road and, and you don't know who the, who your future landlord's going to be. Right. No, that seems like there's a lot of issues. So there has to be right. Like a better way to kind of, you know, trying to protect the home. Um, so kind of what would be some strategies here that, that people could employ that are a little bit better than maybe just saying, Hey, let's get this to a kid. Right. So obviously, 
the first the first option to get the house to the kids is, is to record a beneficiary deed or put it in your will. Mm -hmm. um, the, it doesn't protect the house, but it, it avoids a beneficiary deed is going to avoid probate um, and, and get it you know, to the kids eventually when you pass away, keeps that step up in basis that we mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you're still looking at no protection and it's still countable for Medicaid purposes. Um, so the, the next option would be, well, we're not going to gift it to the kids. Let's let's sell it to them. And so you put together a, a, a real estate sale contract. Um, if you sell it to the kids for less than fair market value, um, the difference between fair market value and the sale price is, is going to be considered a gift. Um, but then you're, you know, if you're looking at the same consequences as just gifting it, um, but you have, you've, you've sold it. So it's, it's not as big of a consequence. And then the, the basis for the kids is going to be the, the sale price. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, you could um, also in that sale contract, you could take back a note, a, a promissory note, kind of like a mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, and you could just gift it to them, you know, basically forgive the payments at 15,000 or 30,000 a year each year because that's okay. the, the the gift tax exclusion and then you know after so many years it's going to be theirs if you're looking at 30,000 a year you know it doesn't take that long 5 10 years but probably um, based on the value um, or you could make a gift to an, an irrevocable asset protection trust and that is is usually what you know if if it's a big value home and and they really want to protect it you you we can set up those irrevocable trusts for clients that's kind of more like the the best case scenario, right? If you've got the time, if you have that time, you think if you've got the five years or, or maybe not quite five years, but you've got some time before you, you know that you're going to need some assisted living type help. Yeah, absolutely. And the same trust that we set up for a home, we can mm -hmm. use for other assets too. So if there's investments, we can, we can move those over. Um, they don't get a full step up in basis as of date of death value, um, but it is an adjusted basis based on the date of the gift. So you gift the house over, the kids have a, a higher basis than, you know, 20 years ago values um, when they go to sell it. And uh, you could even do a lease agreement between the irrevocable trust and, and you okay. to kind of shield some more money in there. And, and, you know, you pay rent into the trust, the trust holds the rent and, and that's moving even more money over and protecting that as well. Okay, awesome. So just before we end real quick, just to summarize here. So just giving that outright gift to the kids probably is, you know, probably not the world's greatest idea. It's kind of what we're, we're coming to. Exactly. Yeah. It's, okay. That's the, uh, you know, I went to, I went to Office Depot and got a deed book and thought this was going to work. And now we're a few years down the line and my, my daughter-in-law is throwing me out of the house. So yes. um, yeah, you, you, there's a lot of pitfalls in that, that sort okay. of strategy. And then maybe kind of the best strategy that we've kind of talked about here might be more doing that like irrevocable trust and having the home placed in that. Yeah, and and you know the the benefits of protecting that far outweigh the costs of mm -hmm. setting up the trust. You know, you're talking a couple thousand dollars or a few thousand dollars for a trust versus hundreds of thousands of dollars that you could potentially lose in, in the value right. of the home. Right. It not, it's not just for like Medicaid purposes, you know, it could be just any any sort of creditor, really, that we're protecting this against. Yep. Yeah. And in fact, with the we've talked a lot about capital gains and taxes in this <laughs> one, uh, a little bit over the head of, of a lot of people. But uh, without getting too far into the weeds, you know, there's been a lot in the news about the capital gains step up at death going right. away. Right. So if you gift the house to that irrevocable trust, you at least get a partial step up and an adjusted basis if if that does go away. So it may become you know a more prominent strategy just for tax purposes. Absolutely. Well, all right, Jim, I really appreciate uh, your time today and being able to hop on here for a few minutes with us. Um, so with that, uh, have a great weekend and uh, thank everybody for watching today.